This next section is kind of long. So I'm going to divide it up into two different parts. Um, the first one is going to just be a little review and we'll talk about just some quick perimeter problems. So super easy. And then we'll knock the rest of it off on Friday. And then you guys have a practice problem to do, some practice stuff that we'll do on Friday as well. So well, I just want to start off as always with the review. So turn off the video and go ahead and solve this system of equations three ways. We've done graphing, we've done substitution, and we've done elimination. So turn off the video and then see how you do uh, graphing, elim substitution, elimination, and then we'll come back and we'll see how you did. So stop the video. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so. For graphing, I think the easiest method is just to solve and get it y equals mx plus b, and then we'll figure out the slope and the starting value. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to solve for y for this problem. So let's go ahead and solve for y. So you take your time. Hopefully you did this already, and you're just checking your work. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. So did you guys get negative over negative is just a positive. I'm going to call it 4 thirds x minus 3. Right, so we subtracted 4x, and then don't forget when we divide, we divide each piece by that negative 3. So it looks like my slope will be 4 thirds, and my starting value is going to be at negative 3. Remember, you can't separate the number from the sign. So I'm down here at negative 3, and I'm going to rise 4, 2, 3, 4, and then run to the right 3 because 3 is positive. So rise, and then run. Okay, I put my paper down. I don't know where I put my little makeshift ruler from last time, so I'm just going to fold up a piece of paper and then go ahead and draw a line. Alright, and now let's mess around with the next one. So I'm going to bring it down here. Okay, so I've got negative 2x plus y equals negative 5. Alright, so I'm going to add 2x to both sides. And that will give me y equals 2x minus 5. Okay, so my slope is 2 over 1, right? And my starting value is negative 5. Okay, so I'm going to start down here at negative 5. And I'm going to rise 2 and run 1. Rise 2 and run 1. Rise 2 and run 1. There it is. There's my solution. Rise 2, run 1. Okay, so you kind of see where they cross already, but we'll draw our line. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you can see where they cross. That's your solution. It's always going to be an ordered pair. So it looks like the solution is going to be when x is 3, y is 1. So that's what we're going to get down here as well, right? We've got to get the same answer of that. All right, so let's see how you remember substitution. So I'm going to, that look kind of crooked? Let me see if I can fix this. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the system. I rewrite it while I'm fiddling here. All right, so my system is 4x minus 3y equals 9 and negative 2x plus y equals negative 5. So substitution is where you want to solve for one variable in terms of the other. And so that's why I said, oh, we'll try to find the variable that has the 1 in the front. And there she is right there. Do you see that y is all alone? So it's going to e be easy to get the y by itself, right? No, I can just do it right down here. So 
to get y by itself, I'm just going to add 2x to both sides. So y is going to equal 2x minus 5. Okay? And we're going to substitute it in to the equation we haven't used yet, which is that one. So we're going to have, oh wait, different colors. We've got 4 x minus 3 instead of y, we're going to go 2x minus 5 equals 9. And you guys know how to do this, right? It's one equation, one unknown. Let's get rid of the parentheses. So it's a negative 3, so negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 x, and negative 3 times negative 5, oh, watch your signs, it's going to be positive 15. So let's combine our like terms. So we'll get negative 2x plus 15 equals 9. Let's subtract 15. So we'll get negative 2x equals negative 6. Running out of room. We'll divide by negative 2. So there we go. x is equal to 3, which is what we... Oh, geez, you're not even be able to see it. Hold on, let me pull that. There we go. Just like in class, I'm running out of room. X equals 3, just like what we got before. Okay, now, if X is equal to 3, let's go ahead and solve for Y. I'm liking this guy right here. So Y is equal to 2 times 3 minus 5. So Y equals 6 minus 5, or Y equals 1. And then we should really check it, right? So there's my solution, 3, 1. We used this equation to solve, so we're going to use this equation to check it. So let's go ahead and just pop the check in there. Are you ready? So it's 4 times x, which is 3, minus 3 times y, which is 1. Does that equal 9? So is 12 minus 3 equal 9? Yep, it does. We rock. All right, so that's substitution. And then elimination, here, let me write this out again. So 4x minus 3y equals 9. Negative 2x plus y equals negative 5. Okay, so you remember for elimination, you want to get the same number but of opposite sign in front of one of the variables. And now this one's up to you because this is pretty easy. Like if we multiply this by 2, then we'd eliminate the x's. If we multiply it by 3, then we would eliminate the y's. So it's your choice. Um, I don't know. What, uh, let's, I'm, for some reason, I'm eyeballing the 3. So I'm going to multiply everything by a positive 3. And when I say everything, I mean both sides of that equation. All right? So this equation is going to end up being negative 6x plus 3y. And then don't forget the 3 times the negative 5 equals negative 15. So let's rewrite my system. We've got 4x minus 3y upstairs. And then the new equation is negative 6x plus 3y equals negative 15. Let me give you a pause to get that kind of straight. I'm hoping you're just checking your work, but let me give you a pause so that you can check it. Okay, so now if we add these together, the y's are going to eliminate. So this will give us, on this side, negative 2x, and on the right-hand side we'll have negative 6, and when I divide by negative 2, there is our x equals 3. And then we've already worked through this, but here I'll just, I'll just use this one upstairs just for fun. So if x is equal to 3, and we're trying to solve for y. We'll have 12 minus 3y equals 9. We'll subtract 12 from both sides. All right, I can see it already. It's working out nice. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 3. All right, so y equals 1. So it doesn't matter which way we do it. We get the same answer every time. Woo, yay us. All right, so the only other little tidbit that I want to do today, and then we'll finish this section off on Friday, and you'll have an oh wow on Friday, um, is perimeter problems. So we're going to do perimeter, 
And then on Friday, we'll do value problems. We'll do some interest problems. And then we'll do mixture problems. So I'll probably make three little mini videos for each. All right, let's try perimeter. So this is just an interesting little fact. Uh, we would have actually spent a little bit more time on it had we been together what's called the golden ratio. I don't know if you guys have ever heard the golden ratio or the golden rectangle. But you can read the interesting fact about it. So Leonardo da Vinci used that golden ratio uh, throughout his painting of the Mona Lisa. And so um, there's a couple problems like it in my math lab. Um, and here's one of them. It says, suppose an artist wants a piece of canvas in the shape of the golden rectangle, right? But the perimeter is going to be 9 feet, and they want you to find the dimensions of the canvas. So I thought we should probably talk about uh, the golden rectangle. So the golden rectangle just means that the height or the width, you know, just depending on where the how it's shaped, is 1.62 times the length. All right. So if I call this the length, then the height is 1.62 times whatever that value is. So 1.62 times the value of the length. Does that make sense? So we know the perimeter is if you add up all the sides. So they want, if we add up the sides, we just went right around the rectangle, it's going to equal 9 feet. So there's a 1 in front of those L's. So we have 1 plus, I'm going to try to do it in my head. I'm just doing it right on the calculator. So we've got 1.62 L's. Then this is a 1 L. This is a 1 L. And this is another 1.62 L. So we have 5.24 L's. 5.24 L equals 9. And then you just divide. So we'll have to round it, I'm sure. So let's round it to two decimals. So um, two decimals would be the one, so it looks like I'm going to make it higher because of that seven. So my length is 1.72 feet. So this one's going to be 1.72 feet. So 1.72 times 1.62. So this is going to be equal to 2 point, I'll just keep it, 7864 feet. So 2.7864 feet. Just look at my math lab. They'll tell you what they want it to be rounded to, whether it's one decimal or two or three. Okay. There we go. So that would be the dimensions of the canvas. So if they're asking you about a golden rectangle problem, you can look it look it up look up in your notes. Okay. All right. The other one is just another perimeter problem, and so take it take your time read it. Pause the video for a second. See if you can figure it out. Um, we've done a lot of these expressions, so I think it should be okay. But go ahead and try it. Take a pause and then try it. All right, let's see. So it said the length of the rectangle is five more than twice the width. All right. So it looks like it's going to be longer. So I'll label this the W. And then the length is 2W plus 5. And then we have another one here, 2W plus 5. Right? And they told us that the perimeter is 112. So if we add up all the sides, we have a W, a 2W plus 5, another W, and another 2W plus 5. If we add up all those sides, we get 112. So there's a 1 understood in front of those. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6W plus... 
five and five is ten. All right, and then you just gotta take your time and solve for W. So I'll subtract ten from both sides. So six W will equal one hundred and two. Divide by 6, W is equal to, I want to do that in my head, <coughs> plunk that into your calculator. Did you guys get 17? All right, so then the width is equal to 17 inches, and this will be 2 times 17 plus 5 would be the length, right? It would be 2 times 17 plus 5. So if you plop that to your calculator, you'll get 39 inches. So there's your dimension. All right, I don't think those are too terrible. Give them a try on the My Math Lab. My Math Lab's open. Um, so this is just part one of that video, and then we'll make some smaller videos for each of the other types of problems uh, that you'll have for Friday, okay? So I hope everyone is doing well and uh, stay tuned. So on Friday, you'll have the rest of this section and then you'll have an oh wow that will be posted on Blackboard that you can um, hopefully print. If not, just write the answers on a piece of paper and send that to me through, you know, take pictures of it and send it to me in an email or take pictures of it and send it to me through Remind. All right, take care, we will talk soon. And don't forget, you can see me on a Zoom room. If you want to see me anytime, just send me a message through Remind that says, Hey, Kathleen, I want to see you face-to-face. -face. I have some questions. And then within two minutes, we'll be looking at each other through a um, computer or phone. Okay? So we'll talk soon. Take care.